This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What's going on guys? So we've got us a new cooling call here. I guess it's tripped the breaker once or twice and now the display's blank on the thermostat, but the breaker's okay. Cause you know, that's normal. You should just keep on resetting it. Let's go uh, take a look, see what's going on. Okay, I bet you it's this one right here. It's the only package unit. No fuses, that's good. Okay, we've got some electrical, we'll get trapped there, it's optional. Let's go ahead and pull the disconnect just in case. We could probably go ahead and do the cheater method just to see if we got anything here. Got power there. Okay, so let's go ahead and kill it. Let's see now, yeah, it's dead, good. Let's go ahead and get that pulled apart, see if it's uh, live there. Undoing wire nuts, these are those old ones where Everything's wire nutted together. We got our power coming in here top left and right. Got 108 volts. I'd say that's probably a problem. So you got that there and there. So if you go down here and go to that one, you got 40 volts, go over to this one, got 209. Wow, that's quite a wild leg, ain't it? So we've lost power there on one of the legs. Yeah, there's 108. So if we go to ground, 209 on one leg, 41 on the other. So we're getting stray voltage going through the windings on the one. We've got a problem down at the breaker. They've tripped it so many times that they've probably blown the breaker up. Let's go ahead and check and see if we got anything to ground. We'll do a generic check here. Let's go on the load side of things. Now granted the contactor's not pulling in, so probably are not gonna get anything accurate here. Okay, nothing there and nothing there. Going between it, you should have something, probably the motors, there's 84 ohms. All right, let's go over here to the compressor. It's the heart of the unit. Oh yeah. All the terminals look in good shape. Okay, capacitors look a little shoddy, but they're getting it. Got wires going through here. It's all taped, good. Let's check this compressor to ground. Okay, we're gonna go into the copper. I always like scratching into the suction line or liquid line, whatever. So we have nothing in between the compressor terminal or between to ground. Now, winding to winding, we got 0 0.6, 2.3, 2.7. One of them's a little lower than the other. Uh, that's three phase, and this is 422D. Uh, no, it's not three phase. Okay, well that's why. We got a capacitor on there. So it's not three phase. It's, so all of our legs are good. We got a capacitor there. Let's go ahead and check that real quick before we go down there. I'm trying to find out why did this trip because something's causing it. Now, as we see, we've got two splits and the refrigeration unit back here and then the makeup air unit and another hood, two hoods. Let's see if we got any shorts down here. It's kind of a rat's nest. I'm not impressed with wires there that are half taped up. Why not just rip it off and redo it? You got plenty of wire. That's what we call lazy. That could cause a rapid ch uh, chatter. Got a box there, it's kind of shoddy. Does not look like that's messed up. And those are your power legs going out. Looks like it's smooth out the back side. I mean, we could have a blower motor, bad for all we know, or a condenser fan motor. We just don't know right now. But we've had it tripping so many times that not a good idea to lay that across there. That could uh, short out. If you're gonna lay it across, at least zip tie it so it doesn't vibrate. This is a 98 unit. Okay, unhooking that. Let's see what we got on this capacitor. 49, and it's rated for 
50, so I'd say our capacitor's good. Nice and tight, just like I like it. There's the yellow, just jumping as a common on down, common going on to the fan, and then the other one, which is a run, going straight over to a contactor, which then goes through this little wire hole here. Okay, let's take a look at the contactor. Okay, we just popped that panel there. I see a wire just kind of hanging here. I'm assuming that probably was an unused fan lead. It's got some insulation, but you don't just let it lay on the freaking metal. That's kind of uh, not really giving your all. Contactor don't look too bad from what I see so far. Should have been a leftover dummy terminal to hook that onto. There's L2. Yeah, I don't like that. Let's pop that other cover off. Somebody stripped them out, so then they went to the next size bigger, which is 3 8 That's never fun unless you got something that makes it easy to switch sizes, and even then, just drill a new hole. A little windy, like I said. All right, I'm about ready to just kick it on, go down there and find out what's up with that breaker. It may have been a weak breaker, hard to say. I mean, everything seems like it's fairly isolated away from things. I mean, it's nasty looking. That there, like I said, that's one of the fan speeds, for whatever reason. So I'll tape that up. Got her taped up back towards itself, that way you don't run into nothing. Left a little tag so you can un undo it. Now, just to reiterate why I did what I did, I wanted to make sure before I go flipping the breaker on that there was nothing obvious. No shorts uh, in the compressors, windings, wires, all that. Let's go take a look and see what we can come up with. I might clean that up here in a little bit once I make sure this thing can even run. That way I don't waste a bunch of time fixing things that just can't won't matter. Let's go ahead and get this plugged back in. Let's go downstairs. Oh, there's a trap. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we've been resetting it over and over. That wire's all burn up. Can't imagine our box is not overloaded here. Yeah. Okay, we're pulling 61 amps without the air conditioner running. 59 amps on that one too. Can't really get into it. But we're gonna go ahead and kill that one. And, oh yeah, look at that, I just ripped right out of it. That's good. So that was probably loose. And usually it'll burn those up, but they might be all right. Wow, good stuff. So we've got burned wires all the way up into there. Maybe even back, not good. Okay, well that one there, looks like it's clamped down nice and tight, but it looks like the wire was maybe behind it. That probably had a little something to do with it. There we go. So you can see that clamp is completely tight. There's no way that uh, number six there was fitting underneath there. It literally is not underneath there. So who did that? I don't know. You can tell that prong ran a little bit warm. I don't know. We have to check wires and see how far back it went. And we went ahead and chopped it off there. Pulled this other one out from behind all that mess. Nothing wrong with this one, no discolorations there on the wires at all. This one here, as I was bending it around stuff, it just crinkled. That's some good stuff right there. Um, it starts to get some good wire there where I chopped it at. Maybe able to get us a uh, splice kit with the clamps and replace it. Everything feels good here. I'm gonna see if I can check that around in a couple different spots. Really ain't much of a place to even look at for it, but yeah. It's always good stuff when, and I highly doubt it's been like that for a super long time. I don't see how that would have been installed that way. And that's a weird looking bus bar. That is definitely weird looking. So, yeah, we we'll have to do what we gotta do. Not real impressed with the rest of the electrical here, but 
I think that's one of them. Well, there's a bunch of other feeds over there too. You can see it just quite interesting. But yeah, I gotta make sure that that's not damaging the conduit, which it does not appear. I think all the bins there kind of made all the heat right there at the loose spot. Okay, well, let's look at the rest of this wiring here. Look at that. Look how those wires are not even underneath the breaker there. So I highly doubt that was anything. Oh my God, down there looks bad too. <sighs> Uncle Bob's electric, I think has been doing some of this work. Okay, we're redoing that fryer. Completely restrict it. I'm not getting blamed for faulty wiring on me. This will all be marked down in the book. Another good reason for making videos. We can prove it had nothing to do with me. And that's on a fryer. Look at this one here. That's ridiculous. Only half of them are underneath there. What I usually like doing is completely cut off that wire. And completely restrip it. It fits underneath the breaker just right. Yeah, that one there is not even tight either. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, I know you're scarring the wire when you do what I'm doing. My cutter's not fitting it, and usually I use my big cable cutters to scar it. That first one had so much heat that the plastic from the insulation stick into it. There we go. Not even what I was here for. Make sure those ones look okay. Yeah, they do. Got the breaker off. Put it on there while you're live, or while you're... Go. Turn away. So, main thing we gotta do now is fix that wire. Looks like it's a newer wire. So we come across. Yeah, I'm hoping I don't have to. Actually, that's not even to the one I'm working on, is it? Maybe it is. Yeah, there it is. It's going up to the roof. I thought maybe it was going to this air handler in front. Yeah, it goes up to the roof. Oh, the other one's okay. Looks like it. These guys are awesome. Feed me some pizza. So I wanted this in a two connector, and I wanted a smaller one. But this one's rated up to um, to six, up to six gauge. So three aught to six gauge. So we're within tolerance. Put your wires in there, crank them down, put your plug in there and you're good to go. I wanted the smaller version, but it's gonna work good for this. I told him if it does trip again, shut the thing off do not turn it back on. We'll then at that point, yank this wire all the way out, all the way up to the roof. I think we're gonna be all right. Yeah, put the wire in there. Yeah, it don't look too bad there. I'm pretty solid. It's not quite as, it's got a little warm, but I think we're pretty good there and I don't want to go any higher up. Screw myself. Okay, that fits in there flush there. That comes across, we'll wire tie that up and we'll hook it in there. Oh, 
definitely like putting mine together ahead of time. That way you can see that you don't have any of your wires sprawled out and that they're completely underneath the lugs. I like to make sure I've got some copper showing outside of the lugs. That way I know that they don't have any insulator getting pinched underneath there. And uh, I mean, not much, just 16th of an inch. And then you can really crank down on it. So it's a brand new 50 amp breaker. Breaker's off. We gotta make sure we're not gonna run a screw right into it. Let's make sure that's away from it. Make sure you don't run something right into it. Just so many loose wires in here, just not good. That's why everything's clear at the tops, clear at the bottoms. I don't like moving these around much. You could have something that's been rubbing into things or some yin yang did whatever. Ready to turn it on. Um, let's go ahead and turn, grab the meter, see what we get. Go ahead and turn it on, turn your head. Okay, it hasn't kicked on yet. Gotta wait for the thermostat. There's a tenth of an amp. The display looks a little messed up. There's no display. May have to put a new thermostat on it. This the display is acting up. So. Did it come in? Voltages and amperages and all that stuff are yeah, customary. Uh, there is a pop cooler machine back there. If you want to grab something. Oh, there. yeah, thanks. Right here to the right. Cool. All right, so it's running. You gave me something to drink. I kind of like working here. Okay, we're pulling 30, 30.5, 30.6 amps. The other one, 31.2. See what kind of voltage we got coming out of this thing. We've got 231.3, 231.5, 231.6. So this is three phase and we got one wild leg. There's 240. So if we go to say ground, here's a wild leg for you guys. Go down here to neutral. So we're gonna watch that. So here's leg one, 117. Leg two, 206. Leg three, 115. Your wild leg should always be in the middle. What that is is the transformer, the way it's wi wired. It's a delta versus Y delta, I believe. I don't like wild legs because if you're not careful where you're at on your single breakers here, you could put 208 volts on a single circuit. One of those legs is hot that has got 208 in it. You cannot just move your breakers and rearrange them. So you gotta keep your crap ready. Obviously three phase and 230 volt systems are no big deal, but 120 volt circuits is where you're gonna have an issue at. So we're at 30 amps on a 50 amp breaker. That's about 20% below it. So we're doing good there. Mainly just need to stick this back in there. I put tape around that one. It was an empty, empty thing. And then I put the tape around it just in case the caps don't pop off. I don't want no stray wires that they got laying there and getting into it. Yes, we're electrically certified with the company. I run underneath their license. We have licensed electricians, plumbers, HVAC, refrigeration, engineering, and a few other things. So uh, that three phase breaker that I fixed earlier, he does not use that no more. So I told him about it and that's good to go. We're clear on that, we're clear on that. We're, we're clear here. Definitely don't wanna play in electrical like this. I mean, it looks like I'm being dangerous on certain things, but I'm pretty confident in my ability. I still make mistakes. I don't like getting in there like I'm doing right now, but I wanna push this back. I don't want, even though it's a flat headed screw, I don't want that screw possibly hitting any of those wires. There's one wire back in this corner, but I'm gonna go right past it. So we're good to go. We got it marked RTU, 208 volt wild leg for anybody that comes along. I've had people uh, wiring things up, move something around, didn't realize that, and then blew a bunch of things up. That I believe was off. I'm gonna leave it off. 
I'll tell him about it. He can turn that on if it needs to be. Chances are it's working fine. Probably won't need to do a whole lot with it. I'm not planning on checking pressures and all that. The coil is clean and everything's sweating. We're gonna roll on. It's one of our hottest days so far this year. And uh, I'm sure they're not happy that I've been here for a while because I had to go all over trying to find that stupid little clamp thing. Nobody had a clue what I'm talking about. Obviously HVAC must use those more than electricians. It's cool, it's not freezing cold. Definitely hot. These things have had it. Beyond had it, but it appears they're working. Woo! Can you feel the heat tonight? That don't look too bad. Do a courtesy check here. Yeah, it's not too horribly bad. All right. Well, let's see if we can maybe fix that trap. There we go. It's on there. That's kind of a mess. That's snapped clean off. Ugh. Okay, so what we ended up doing, I backed that piece out of there, blew out the junk of gunk in there. And as you can see, it's already threading itself on there. So we're gonna thread this onto the end and let it stick out of the unit. And that should work good enough for a trap. It might leak a little bit, but as long as it makes it uh, so it can drain, that's all that really matters. Yeah, there we go. It's actually screwing in there perfect. I thought it looked kind of familiar. I mean, look at that, it's not, it's not coming off. And then boom, we're good to go. Generic hack and jack band, hack and jack. Yep, look at that. Looks right on there like that. That should work out perfect. Because those thermostat wires I wasn't too thrilled with. Yeah, we might fix those real quick. We just turned the power off to it. Let's go ahead and fix these wires up a little bit. Like they should have been done to begin with. So I like to strip it out like that. Yeah, you can see that. That's crap. I don't like those brown ones. So let's go ahead and just snip off the yellow. Get down here some fresh. I don't like a lot of that exposed wire anyways because all it does is easily shorts into things. Half inch. Here's a trick I never knew until I read it in a box. Your stranded wire is supposed to be your lead wire out and that way it gets caught on the threads of your wire nut. Some basics there. This does not strip well for 18 gauge wire. I don't know why. Definitely is not great at that. So I just pinch and pull. Just basically going through and cutting them all about the same length. So that, that there is just garbage. Okay, everything's all pretty there. Look at it, all nice and clean. You can actually get the crap. Imagine that, right? Now we'll clean that up a little more there like that. We'll pull apart, good to go. And you just tuck that back in there. That'll keep it away from any sharp objects. This here, since we got it, un it turned off now, we can go ahead and Tuck some of that in there a little bit better. Don't recommend doing that with a live. Super duper. Okay, get that back together. Turn it back on, get that time delay going. Went ahead and wire tied it to it. All this is tidy and back together. Okay, I didn't have the door all the way down. So we're good there. Put the extra screw there, keep that from opening up. Well guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sure there's a few things, maybe you shouldn't tape those wires together like I did on the THHN so they can stick together and not be fraying out all over the place. Everything was done safely. Had a few things there as far as the wire, you know, into the conduit. I mean, it could have been damaged, but I don't think it was. Amperage wise, everything looks fine and normal. We made the repair. Customer knows what's going on. A lot of times they don't want to spend a lot more than they need to. So if it means have to come back on another trip, fine, so be it. Uh, you could always spend more. 
uh, necessarily, uh, but far as safety wise, everything where I was working at was perfectly good. Refrigerant wise, everything seems to be fairly close. It's 422D, it's a 1998 unit. It's 24 years old. I mean, it's living on a prayer as it is. 22D or whatever is not gonna be the greatest stuff coming back and I don't have any on the truck. So even if I wanted to top it off, I couldn't do that. Uh, not a whole lot of reason to do that. We need to check the filter, that's about it. Air filter looks fine. The grill's dirty, but the air filter's fine. It's gone straight through there, no problem. So the air filter's downstairs, but otherwise everything else looks good. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch it. If you guys made it to the very end, give me a thumbs up in the description along with the video itself. And until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.